Hi everyone, my name is Sabolc and you are watching the final part of my vehicle armor project. If you haven't seen the first two episodes, please take some time and watch them now because I'm going to refer to lots of things that happened in them. Let's get started. I disassembled the smaller ceramic plate first. The white discoloration indicates the forces created by the bullets. This is the shot that penetrated. And this is its pair, which didn't. You can see the rod still inside the channel. Let's turn it over. I sped up some clips to keep this video as compact as possible. I quickly freed the front steel plate from the plastic and the duct tape and the funny sight welcomed me. There were most of the bullets we shattered the plate. Some of them were even on its original place. Here's the moment that makes me very proud. It looks exactly the same as I predicted. Individual tiles had been damaged, but the overall structure is still functional. Remember when I said I hope the force of the impact won't break off the ceramic mesh? Well, it did, but that meant I could easily remove it. Here's the backside. Under that, there was some ceramic dust and bullets catched by the fiberglass. It's important to mention that on the footage I'm doing this for the first time, so after revealing the mosaics I was genuinely surprised how good it stood against the projectiles. And now let's see the marble plate. Below the plastic I found some bullet parts too, mostly from the Glock and Scorpion. This is the place of the multiple hit capacity test. The back of the front plate looked like a terrain map, but in fact only the AK-47 and Dragunov was able to puncture the steel. What you see now is me tearing up the silicone cover to check how the neighboring pieces took the shock. This is right next to where the 7.62x54R hit. The conclusion is simple and reassuring. Only those pieces were destroyed that got directly hit. Even the ones right next to them had little to no damage, as you see. I couldn't really measure the bullet channels because they were filled with marble dust. The situation around the AK hits were very similar. These pieces broke away as they were placed at the bottom edge. This was a slightly better place to check the entry holes. And here's the most interesting part at the backing plate. This rod somehow got through but stuck in the steel. Here's a comparison. These are both steel rods from the AK ammunition, except the one on the left is the one that penetrated the ceramic plate. We picked it up from the ground. It deformed quite a lot and the man from the range told me that this is how it usually looks like. However, in my hand you can see the same rod in its intact form. I'm not sure why it kept its original form. These are the exit holes. It doesn't look like it's been shot 19 times, does it? I was curious as always, so I looked below the protecting silicone layer. It was dust and broken tiles, but none of the bullets reached the surface of the fiberglass. It's a bit contradictionary that while this structure can easily stop smaller calibers by using only a layer of steel and ceramics, it is not strong enough to catch full-sized runs even with the added fiberglass. Before this experiment, I thought the difference won't be this big. 
but there is always place for improvement. The conception works, but I should find better materials and better layering order. Finally, I put in this picture showing a ricocheted bullet and some other parts. Thank you for joining me in this project, it was an interesting one. Stay tuned for more of these, although I don't have a definitive upload schedule yet. Currently I have other priorities, but after the final exams I will focus on content producing with extra effort. You can expect a new video in every 2 or 3 weeks and some smaller projects in the meantime. I appreciate your support whether it is subscribing or sharing my videos. Thanks for watching, see you next time.